We was taking fire, and it was just me, Lloyd D, um, Son Davis. They were just sitting down eat, eating. It was like, what are you doing? Is this is your fight? Come out and fight with us. But they weren't interested. They were pissed off. But in the end, we managed to get them out, and they did all right. Some of them bombs, like the A-10s, okay, I wouldn't have stood about. Scary, them are. But they seem to, as soon as it went in, they seem to get up and start firing again. And how can they survive that kind of firepower? I don't know. I don't know how they do it. I don't, really don't know how. Well, they dropped two or three 1,500-pound bombs on the Taliban. Uh, it went quiet for a while. Everybody ate dinner, thought it was over, and then they've just popped up again. Despite all the firepower that's rained on them all afternoon, they were they're apparently um, regrouping, ready to ambush a group of ANA soldiers just off to our right here. I don't know where they get their numbers from, but they're constantly here. It's an honour for them in a dying battle to die killing infidels, which, which they call us, they call us infidels. So to kill an infidel or die fighting an infidel is a great death. Like you said, like a couple weeks ago when a suicide bomber jumped in their vehicle. How can you fight against that? Just look like a normal person walking along the road, you can't fight against that. So. So we, we, we done them in last night, but they carried on fighting all through the night. Stand by. Come on, lads, look lively. Three minutes. Yeah. Three Afghan minutes, so three English minutes. Three English minutes. Oh, that's good. Three Afghan minutes, two hours. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Alakata, let's go. When the fighting stopped and Jack went out with the ANA on a patrol of the area they had just secured, every step was fraught with peril. Just push him along here, Lloyd, for some protection. Well, in fact, Lloyd, push him down the side here. Go along the side, because they're in that compound there, aren't they? We cleared this area the other day. We had a lot of fighting for it. But we managed to get through to where we are now. But now, it's like I said, we're pushing back, because we've been told that the locals are moving back in. So we're just pushing back to reassure them that we don't mean no trouble and everything's all right. So is this the, the danger area for mines and bombs? Yeah, this would be, yeah, they put it sort of like on the entry to a compound or something, if they're fighting from. They did it quite a few times. Any kind of point where you'd walk through, that's where they'd put it. So, um, pictures of people who live there, more like the Taliban. Live. They, they take, we always find photos of them. They take, um, they like to take photos of themselves with their weapons, and but yeah, they like their pictures, which is good for us because then we can identify them. No signs of blood or no yeah. Taliban corpses, nothing. Nothing, no. I reckon if they was dead, they would have cadzibacked them by now. We ain't been here for two days, but... They'd come back and get their dead, would they? Yeah, they always do. That's, that's what they do. I think it's like Muslims have been in there. They've been buried in 24 hours or it's a disgrace. So they'll do anything to get them out. They leave booby traps in that when they come and pick their dead up, they usually do. So you've got to be careful, watch where you step in. Two bods. Bonnie, you got them? Hey, I'm going to I think it's PRD two bods down there. The thing is, we've been told there's not no, um, there's not no people moved back in down that end of the village. So people just presuming it must be Taliban. Hey, push down. So we saw uh, two 
two young males walking in front of this compound just in front of us. Um, one of the A and A fired at him straight away because two young males is instantly suspicious. And apparently, the test is if they um, if they freeze and put their hands up, terrified, they're probably civilians. If they run away, they're probably Taliban. And these two just casually kept on walking around the back of this building that, um, that's being circled now. The two men disappeared and everyone walked back to their temporary home for the last time. That evening, another group of soldiers arrived and the Queen's Company finally got their break. They had been out on operations for 81 straight days. Jack had made it to his leave. But as soon as they got back to the main base, they had to shave, shower, and attend a service. A close friend of Jack's for almost five years, Guardsman Daryl Hickey was killed during the recent operation. Well, I knew this was coming, so it sort of dampens us coming back. I was looking forward to coming back, but I didn't want to come back to my friend's funeral. But... You're getting used to this now. What, repatriation? Yeah. yeah, I've been to about four, three, four already now. It's, uh, it's not nice, but it's a nice way to send people off. You know, say goodbye. I was in the Queen's Company with Hickey for, since, the, since I joined the Queen's Company four and a half years ago. Really nice person, got on well. And, you know, I miss him already. You feel like you feel bad, like. You don't want to feel too happy about going home because there's certain people that didn't make it home. And I think people at home should remember that a bit more. That people give their lives and they don't make it home to see their family again. And Hickey's one of them. And um, he's going to be missed. He came home for a short duration of leave, wasn't it? And then yeah, went was it two weeks? Two weeks. Yeah. Very short attention span. Yeah, very quiet. Very quiet, yeah. Distant at times. Dis yeah. Yeah, he was. Mm, the thousand yard stare, they call it, is it, the army? Yeah, he was very, very uh, quiet. Was it himself? No, it definitely wasn't himself. Mm. After a fortnight's leave back in Tottenham, Jack rejoined the rest of the Queen's Company, who had moved north to Sangin, where the surrounding area is so dangerous that everyone has to be helicoptered in. Sangin had been a Taliban stronghold just four months earlier, and much of the town had been destroyed in the fight to take control of it. The atmosphere was largely hostile. Not too many friendly faces when you drive through there, are there? Yeah, I don't know, they don't like us around here at all. It's totally different from where people seem happy to see you and that around here. They just don't want you to be here. Do you think some of them are Taliban? Oh, yeah, definitely. Most of them are Taliban, or definitely some Taliban sympathizers anyway. The soldiers must maintain a strong presence in Sangin and patrol daily. But the threat of suicide bombers, or IEDs, improvised explosive devices, is high. With the base in sight, we were tantalizingly close to being able to cross off another day. But then they discovered an IED planted just outside the entrance. We've just come forward and been told to stop here, put our out a cordon, because they're going to try and blow it. It was laid yeah. last night? Yeah, it was laid last night, yeah, at night. Hey. It's just where they, that man stands in there, in the body. How often are you finding IEDs? Most days, every day. I think um, Amber 64 found two in one day about three days ago. It's a very, very different threat to what it was in Goresk. 
Yeah, Gresham was more fighting, and you know, you had, a, you had a chance, you know, you'd rather have a fight, wouldn't you? At least you've got a chance of surviving. But with IEDs and that, you've got no chance. As soon as it hits you, you're more likely dead. Or whoever's in the vehicle is dead. Do you think that's the way it's going? It's going away from fighting? Yeah, yeah, to... well, yeah. they know they can't win fighting, so... They're employing them tactics now. Not very good for us, but... The booby trap was eventually disarmed, so we could enter the base. <laughs> Sporting a new tattoo, infidel in Arabic, Jack gets a break to enjoy the one good thing Sangin has to offer. A river runs right through the main base. Just come in for a couple of hours, we come in a couple of hours every day, just have a little swim and that, fuck about, get a bit of time off. A bit of morale for the lads and A&A &A get in as well. Just a bit down time. Yeah. Uh. Fuck off, Floyd! Where's that rock? Bit of a tan, bit of a swim, bit of a wash, same time. Wash your car! I've got one dance on He's asking me about um, Carl um, Shadrach that got blown up in a suicide bombing. Because we was with these lads at the start of the tour, and I've just seen him today for the first time for a couple of months. So I was just telling him that he's all right, he's home safe. Dicky, Dicky friend. Dicky good, Dicky English stone. English stone? English stone, yeah. <laughs> good. 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 They're totally different culture with people. But, I mean, they've got a great sense of humour. I mean, they have a right laugh and that. So the same sort of as British lads, they, they, have a, they like to have a laugh, which is good. They lost guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. yeah they've lost yeah. loads, loads of guys, yeah. A lot more than we've lost. Lost a lot of friends. the front, mate. Right, so, Lloyd, come with me. Let's go. With less than three weeks to go before the end of his tour, Jack finds himself under attack again. We got attacked from three sides, but we've just ID'd their positions and we're trying to get air in now to fucking sort it out. But we've been attacked from three sides. So yeah, trying to overrun the base, I suppose. Didn't you say this place was quiet compared to three sides? <laughs> yeah, we thought it was quiet compared to Goresk when we were down there. But all of a sudden, just finished our mill and we got walloped. Fuck me, I've got fucking two weeks and six days left and this starts happening. I just want to go out. I haven't got long left now, though. Do you think there's more chance of something happening the closer you get to your return? Well, that's the way you feel, don't you? You know, at the start of the tour, you don't really think about it. You've got that long to go, but when you've got three weeks left, you start to think about things a bit more. You start to miss people a bit more. Not long to go. The following morning, Jack went on patrol to the building the Taliban had been firing from the night before. Guys! So when you've been attacked from, from the local town, yeah. how do you sort of view all the locals when you walk around town the next day? 
Well, obviously they knew something about it, you know. They was obviously told, or well, they was probably something to do, but there's probably people standing there now that was firing at us. They all get involved, as you can imagine, if a couple of people are firing here and there's no um, British forces here, they'd probably all stand up and get involved. They've all got weapons. So why do you think people would be...